project is sponsored by Leica, and in this video I'll be using the Leica laser level to hang pictures perfectly level. This is a really handy tool. I used it recently when I was building the cabinet around the shop fan, and I'll be using it in the near future for a chair rail project that I want to do in the house probably sometime after the holidays. If you want to learn more about the laser level, I'll have a link in the description. The first step in this project is to make your molding, and if you don't know how to make the molding, click on this video right here and fast forward to minute 150. Once your molding is made, I like to brush prime the molding first and then lightly sand it. The reason why I like to brush prime it is it saves on spray paint. That's going to be the final coat. Once all your molding is made and primed and sanded, it's time to make a frame. And what I do is you basically have two measurements in a frame. You have the short measurement and the long measurement. So let's go over to the chop saw and I'll show you how I just put a piece of tape on my fence and I make all of the shortcuts first and then all of the long cuts. So over here at the chop saw, you can see that I've got a sacrificial fence on my chop saw and I've added to the fence because the molding's a little bit longer than what I usually make. So that was simply done by screwing this piece of MDF to the original sacrificial fence. For the first cut, I'm holding the molding upside down. Now I'll hold the mat at the inside of the first miter cut. And next I'll mark a line just about a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch beyond the mat. I want the opening of the frame to be just a little bit larger than the mat. Then I'll hold the molding with the line exactly even with the cut on the sacrificial fence. At the other end of the molding, I'll attach a piece of painter's tape on the sacrificial fence and use the tape as a mark for the rest of the long cuts. Once you've measured and marked, cut all of your molding at that length. So in my case, I'm making five frames, so I cut 10 at the long length. Then I re-measured and marked and cut 10 at the short length. And with all of my molding cut, next I'll start to make the frames. To make the frames, I like to put a smooth piece of MDF or plywood on my work table. And I'm using wood glue and one inch nails in my pin nailer. I'll hold the miter tight together, making sure my fingers are out of the way. And remove the wet glue with a damp rag before it has a chance to set up. While the frames are drying, I'll get started on mounting the photographs and I'll use foam core for the backing. So now I've got all of the backing cut, I'm going to open up a mat. And again, this is a standard size mat that will fit an 8x10 photograph. And you should be able to find these in any arts and crafts store. Make sure you're working on a clean surface. Turn the mat upside down. And I like to draw a reference line about a quarter of an inch from the opening at the top and on one of the sides. Then I'll take the photograph and drop it face down on the mat and hold it in place with a piece of tape at each corner. And then place your backing on the back, flip it over and we're almost there, we just have to add the glass. Once you're sure that there's no dust on the mat or the photograph, place the glass on top. And then I hold the glass in place with a few pieces of tape on just the edge of the glass, folding it underneath the mat board and the backing. Now I've got a piece of foam on my work table so I don't scratch the frame 
and I'll drop the matted photograph into the frame. And this is a really handy tool, but I don't expect you to have this, so you could just hammer small nails into the side of the frame and that will hold everything in place. I finished putting all the photographs in the frames last night and then this morning I came in and made a few French cleats and that's how I'm going to hang the photographs and that will make sure that they're, they're never crooked, they'll always be nice and straight. To make the French cleats I started with half inch plywood, ripped it into two and a half inch strips, then changed the angle of my saw blade to 35 degrees and cut a 35 degree angle on the half inch plywood and then I cut that same angle on a piece of scrap poplar. Now I'm going to attach the poplar to the back of the frame. To attach the cleat to the back of the frame, I'll use just a little bit of glue and 5 8 inch nails in the pin nailer. Hold the cleat flush with the back of the frame and I'll attach it with three nails. One at each end and one in the center. It's always a good idea to come up with a plan for an installation and in this case I'm going to install the center cleat first and the space between cleats is 5 inches so I've cut a piece of scrap wood at 5 inches and I'll use this as a measuring stick in between the cleats. From the top of the frame to the bottom of the cleat is 3 inches so I've established where I want the top of the frame to be, measured down 3 inches and put another piece of tape on the wall. Next I'll align the laser at the top of this piece of tape. I just finished installing the last cleat and I wanted to mention that I'm using inch and a quarter coarse sheetrock screws to install the cleats. I get the screw started with a screw gun and then I finish the screw with a handheld screwdriver making sure that I don't over tighten the screw and strip it in the sheetrock. This is fine for light work. If you want to add a little insurance to the cleat you could add a dab of wood glue at each edge. If you're going to hang something heavier you definitely want to hit a stud or use a molly. So now that I've got all of the cleats installed, it's time to hang the photographs. Nice to have that project behind me. It's one of those things I've been putting off for years because I refinished that mudroom probably six or seven years ago and the plan was always to put photographs on the wall and the Leica laser level made that project really easy. I think probably the toughest part about that project was picking out the photographs or deciding which photographs would be framed. If you have any questions on this video, just leave them in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them next week. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you soon.